Hello everyone, I am Madhusudan Raj, your host. I am back with my weekly economic report. This is 9 September 2012. And I want to begin with one small housekeeping announcement. You must be knowing, you know, those of who, who, those of who you are following me on my YouTube channel, those who have subscribed to my channel, that I did not come out with my weekly economic report last week. Uh, that is simply because there is nothing much new happening in the Indian economy. As you will see, I, I'm just going to cover those couple of news in a, in a while. So what, I'm, uh, what I want to do now is I just want to change the format a little bit and I will only, I will come up with my economic reports but uh, maybe not weekly. What I will do is that whenever I'll find something, some, some important news about which I need to inform you, I will only analyze those events instead of just coming regularly with my weekly economic report. So in any case, you know, I'll try my best to come out as frequently as possible. But as I said, it will all depend on what kind of events are taking place. Of course, you know, there are, there are so many important events taking place every day. But I, I have to, you know, uh, pick and choose. Because most of the time they are just, you know, same news every time. And I, I cannot comment on them all the time. Because whatever I have to say, I have already said in my past economic reports. Anyways, let us begin today with uh, the major uh, news which came out in last week. Uh, economic, uh, Indian economy is slowing down as you all must be knowing, you know, in my past reports, you know, I have said that the Indian economy uh, was a huge bubble which was created by RBI uh, in the beginning of 2007 financial crisis. They pumped a lot of money into the Indian economy and even before that the interest rates are you know, kept artificially lower and they fuel this economic bubble in various sectors of Indian economy, sectors like auto, real estate, infrastructure, industry, heavy goods, you know, capital goods industry. And uh, since last past 20 months or so, now they have raised the interest rate and uh, right now they are not lowering it. So that is the reason why this economic bubble is popping, it's, it's bursting. And econo Indian economy is basically now in the correctionary phase of recession. So that is the reason why all these uh, growth numbers are showing decline. Uh, in first quarter 2012, economy grew only by 5.5%. And as I'm saying, uh, who knows where these numbers will be if uh, the RBI will stop printing money even right now. Although they have, they are not increasing the interest, they are not decreasing the market, you know, interest rate, but they have basically stopped, uh, they, they, are, they have not stopped uh, printing money and spending into the market. I told you in my last reports that uh, by reducing the SLR recently, they released something like 60,000 crore rupees into the market. And all this free money is going out there and fueling all this bubble, which, you know, ultimately is going to pop. So that's why, uh, that is the reason why growth is slowing down. There is nothing new, there is nothing surprising into all this thing. Uh, CII is saying that industrial production has slowed down almost to zero. <clears throat> As I said, this is continuation. All these industrial sectors were in bubble. They were, you know, inflated by the uh, loose monetary policy of RBI by, you know, printing truckload of money, creating cheap credit. And once that cheap credit had stopped flowing, all these industrial sectors, whatever long-term projects they started, they they found that they cannot finish this pro you know project right now. They they are stuck wherever they are because the artificial cheap credit credit is not forthcoming from the banks. So that is the reason why all these industries are slowing down because they were in bubble. As I said, they will have to go through this correctionary recessionary phase if they really want to recover later on. If the Indian economy wants to go back to a normal path then this recessionary phase must be allowed to run its natural course. If RBI is going to intervene again and if government is going to continue to intervene into different you know, segments of Indian economy, then the recession will never be over and in fact this recession will turn into deep depression. And that is what is my worry and that is what is I am expecting the RBI and government to do. They will continue to meddle in the market and they will turn this slow down into a big big depression so ugly days are ahead for all of us uh, as I said you know uh, they are not going to stop at that auto loan is the fastest growing segment in last year 
So not only real estate bubble, infrastructure bubble, this heavy capital goods industry bubble, there is a big bubble right now going on, you know, uh, building up in the auto sector also. Again, if they stop, you know, uh, giving these cheap loans, I don't know how many cars you will find on Indian roads. And because of this artificial cheap credit, all these cars are on the road and that's why you see a lot of traffic congestion problems, etc. Maybe in another blog I'll come out and discuss that how these traffic problems and other events are, you know, take, you know happening because of this artificial, you know, uh, uh, lowering of auto loans by the banking sector, how they are fueling this auto bubble. But as I said, this is another bubble which is building up right now and that surely will bust in future. This cannot go on for a very long period of time because this these different bubbles are not being backed by any kind of uh, real pool of savings and and that is the reason why they will have to pop one day. I, I cannot give you the date when it is going to happen but in future that is going to happen. One one particular you know uh, sign which you have to keep uh, an eye on is when the real interest rate will start to go up, when they will turn positive and when they will start to go up, that is the time when all these bubbles will start to pop one by one. Anyways, SPI cut fixed deposit rate by 0.5 to 1 percent. Uh, as I said again, they are, they, are, they are cutting their interest rate and fueling this bubble. SPI is one of the biggest public bank, I think one of the largest bank in India is the public bank, bank which is owned by state. They have, the lo they have a lot of toxic debt on their books also, but in any case, they are continuing with this you know different kinds of bubble because they think that the growth is slowing down and, and for this mainstream economists and media pundits and policy makers the only way of you know well creating growth is by printing money and spending it into the economy they, they don't have a coherent uh, proper definition of economic growth and that is the reason why all these policies uh, on the others are I, RBI is continuing with it with its you know gold demonizing policies you know last week governor said that uh, RBI governor said he advised people against you know gold investment they are saying that gold is bought by poor people and it is not it is just a barren asset and stuff like that I, I, I said in my last report that it's all nonsense these people just simply don't understand what gold is as I said gold is actually money and all these poor people are not foolish, you know, they understand what they're doing. So they are protecting themselves against this rising prices, you know, they're protecting themselves against inflation, which is, you know, coming from RBI. So RBI is itself creating all this problem. They are the ones who are responsible for this growing, you know, fiscal deficit, growing trade deficit, growing this, you know, current account deficit about which they are very much worried about and they're thinking that if they can slow down the import of gold by, you know, just demonizing it, then that is going to correct the problem. No, it is not going to correct the problem because that is just a symptom of their own policies. People are buying gold because they are worried about the purchasing power of their hard-earned money and that's the reason why they will continue to buy gold, you know. If they're going to uh, restrict gold buying, what is going to happen is, as I said in my past reports, smuggling will, you know, start to increase and that is what is ha happening. You know, last week there were news that uh, gold smuggling is on the rise. That's what is going to happen. That's what you expect, you know, if you know the human action laws that when government bans something, people are going to find out alternative ways of you know, acquiring those goods and services and there will be different entrepreneurs who will be ready taking risks to provide these goods and services, so called contraband to their customers and that's what is happening right now. Uh, they are also, government is also thinking of hiking gold import duty again and uh, as I said this is not going to solve the problem because they are not attacking the root cause of these imbalances, they are just attacking the effects. Uh, as long as they are not going to stop printing money and stop meddling into the market, nothing is going to improve for better and people will going to buy and they should continue to buy gold as well as silver because as you know the prices have already started to go up. Uh, whatever correctionary phase was there, it's over now. World governments and world central bankers are now ready to print more and more money. That's the reason why gold will really, you know, 
arise very faster now from this level so you all should position yourself you all should buy gold and silver now if you want to protect your wealth all right then thank you very much for watching me i'll be back with more news in future bye bye